Imagine what we could learn if we could follow a fish on its journey through life. Where does the fish find its food? What temperature and depth does it prefer? Where does it spawn? Great Lakes fishery managers need answers to these types of questions because they must make decisions to promote a healthy, thriving fishery. Management decisions require the best available scientific information and data about a fish, their habitat, and the ecosystem. In the past, most information about fish movements has been inferred by comparing the recapture location of a tagged fish to the location where it was released. While this has given us some sense of where fish go, it doesn't tell us much about what a fish was doing during the months or years between being marked and then recaptured. Today that has changed. Like having a tracking device on a car, we can now follow a fish with tremendous accuracy. Through support of the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, the Great Lakes Fishery Commission through its partnership with Michigan State University is using innovative acoustic telemetry technology to unravel the mysteries of Great Lakes fish. Where and when do fish move? What causes fish to change their movement patterns? Fish movements are tracked using a vast network of underwater receivers, small data logging computers that are anchored near the bottom along migration routes, near spawning areas, and other places of interest to scientists. The receivers listen for the fish that have been implanted with an acoustic tag. Each tag emits a series of sound pulses or pings that are unique to that tag. Each time a tagged fish swims by a receiver, the unique ID code is recorded along with the date and time. Some tags also send depth and temperature data. Multiple pings at various receivers allow scientists to determine the position of the fish, much like the GPS on a car. In just three years, scientists have tracked thousands of fish and recorded tens of millions of data points. Where to place receivers is driven by the questions desired to be answered and is critical to accurately positioning fish. Typically, receiver placement requires knowledge of the lake bottom depths, which is obtained through the careful examination of maps and boat-mounted sonar. Acoustic tags come in a variety of sizes to suit the size of fish. Tags are surgically implanted into the abdomen through a small incision. Tagging, sometimes done on boats, uses special equipment to ensure the fish are well cared for. Tagging typically takes less than two minutes. After the tag is inserted and the incision closed, the fish is placed into a recovery tank and then released back into the wild. After the fish is released, receivers record the pings and provide a detailed travel log, like stamps in a passport book, as each fish goes about its business. For instance, data from the receiver network can be used to determine where a particular fish spent the winter, spawned or even died. As a project draws to a close, receivers are retrieved by a skilled team proficient in precise navigation and armed with lots of patience. Using GPS and sonar, the captain steers the vessel to the location of the receiver where a grapple hook is used to snag a rope lying on the bottom attached to the receiver. The Great Lakes Fishery Commission has established the Great Lakes Acoustic Telemetry Observation System, GLATOS, a network of underwater receivers representing many projects and scientists. The GLATOS website, sponsored by the Great Lakes Observing System and the Great Lakes Fishery Commission, is an interactive site that compiles information about acoustic telemetry projects in the Great Lakes. Any scientist engaged in acoustic telemetry research can join the GLATOS network and showcase their work by developing a project homepage and adding receiver locations to the GLATOS map. Visitors to the site can read about specific projects, explore receiver locations, report catching a tagged fish, and learn more about how this cutting-edge technology is used to protect and improve the fishery. Every fish has a story to tell, and the collective data from GLATOS gives scientists an amazingly detailed picture of fish behavior. After only a few years, the Great Lakes Fishery Commission and its partners have made exciting new discoveries about fish movement and migration not possible before. The degree of understanding and new knowledge that has been gained through the application of acoustic telemetry is unparalleled. Lake trout, one of the Great Lakes' most important species, were once thought to be lost from the lakes forever. 
through restoration efforts by the state, provincial, tribal, and federal partners, and the Great Lakes Fishery Commission. Naturally reproducing populations of lake trout are now found in Lake Superior and Huron. Yet little was known about where and when lake trout spawn, until now. Fine-scale tracking on reefs in Lake Huron has revealed lake trout spawning on unusual habitat that defied conventional knowledge, such as under large boulders. In a lake as big as Lake Huron, acoustic telemetry helped us find the proverbial needle in a haystack. The telemetry data led scuba divers to a location where they were able to capture the first ever high-quality video of lake trout spawning in the Great Lakes. This newfound information is being used to accelerate recovery of this keystone species. The Great Lakes' oldest and largest living native fish, the lake sturgeon, is listed as threatened or endangered in many areas of the region. Within the waters that connect Lake Huron and Lake Erie, the use of acoustic telemetry technology permits examination of specific movement patterns of lake sturgeon to determine the number of individual populations that reside in these waters. These data have helped identify critical habitats necessary to sustain healthy lake sturgeon populations. Lake St. Clair, in between Lake Huron and Lake Erie, is now identified as an important overwintering area and feeding ground for these ancient giants, despite the lake's status as a hotspot of contamination and habitat degradation. This finding further elevates the necessity of continuing critical cleanup efforts in this lake. The Great Lakes walleye fishery attracts anglers from all over the world. Using acoustic telemetry technology, scientists discovered that Saginaw Bay walleye sometimes make long migrations through the waters of Lake Huron. These migrations surprise scientists by being farther and faster than previously imagined. Walleye routinely travel between Saginaw Bay and the Straits of Mackinac, a migration of more than 100 miles in less than a month. This information contributes to a much greater understanding of areas where walleye are vulnerable and will help determine if harvest in one area affects production in another. Acoustic telemetry technology is not only used to aid native species restoration efforts, but also helps scientists better understand how some of the lake's most unwanted species, like sea lamprey and Asian carp, can be more effectively addressed through prevention and control. For example, the St. Mary's River is a major contributor to the sea lamprey populations in Lakes Michigan and Huron. Scientists are now using acoustic telemetry to track sea lamprey movements in this large river and to determine how effective traps are in catching lamprey. The telemetry data showed that only a small number of sea lampreys approach those traps resulting in significant underestimation of abundance in the river. These fine-scale lamprey tracks are also being used to identify the most likely places and times to intercept lampreys with traps during their migration through rivers, helping to improve control efforts for this destructive invasive species. Thanks to acoustic telemetry, the Great Lakes Fishery Commission significantly revised its control strategy in the St. Mary's River, increasing the efficiency of the sea lamprey control program throughout the basin. More cost-effective sea lamprey controls means we get fewer lampreys and more productive fisheries for less money. The Great Lakes comprise 20% of the world's fresh water and are home to 177 species of fish. Acoustic telemetry research supports a healthy Great Lakes economy and ecosystem, including improvement of the $7 billion Great Lakes fishing industry that provides more than 75,000 jobs and represents an enormous social, economic, and cultural asset to the region. Acoustic telemetry funds from the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative have propelled fisheries science forward by decades and will continue to serve the Great Lakes for years to come. The possibilities are limited only by a scientist's imagination. More and more scientists are joining the GLATOS network each year and each new project adds another piece to the puzzle of understanding how best to manage and sustain the world-class Great Lakes fishery.